Welcome back to The Deep Dive. Today, we are uh, wading right into the deep end where institutional finance meets programmable money. You shared some really fascinating research with me, and it centers on, well, what feels like the oldest tension in this space. It is. It's the core conflict. You have these traditional players on one side, banks, credit unions, huge payment networks, and they demand stability, compliance, absolute trust. Right. And then on the other side, you have digital assets. And, you know, a lot of them still struggle to meet that incredibly high bar. It no. creates this gap. A huge gap that's preventing real institutional adoption. Mm. And that perfectly frames our mission for today's deep dives. We're looking at the material around the Metal Dollar Stablecoin Index, or uh, XMD. XMD, okay. And we needed to find this right away. <laughs> XMD isn't just another stablecoin. The source material calls it a reserve-backed stablecoin basket. A basket. Exactly. And it's designed from the ground up specifically for those partners you just mentioned. We're talking banks, fintechs, global processors. Okay, so let's unpack that because this idea of a basket really is the whole structural innovation here. It feels like the shortcut to getting why institutions would even look at this. It is. I mean, we're all pretty familiar with single asset stable coins. You have one issuer, one compliance team, one big pool of reserves. And one single point of failure. Right. And for an institution, that's concentration risk. Precisely. And regulators hate concentration risk. Yeah. The research is clear that XMD's design is meant to just eliminate that headache entirely. It doesn't rely on a single issuer. Instead, it aggregates multiple uh, compliant, fully reserved stablecoins into one single asset. So if I'm a bank, I don't have to put, you know, billions of dollars on my balance sheet and bet it all on the compliance program of one single company. You're not. You're buying into a diversified index. An index of what are already considered the safest digital dollars out there. So that diversification is kind of the institutional safety blanket. It's what lets them even start the conversation. It's risk mitigation that's actually built into the asset structure. Yeah. But, you know, to convince them, the plumbing has to be just as solid as the architecture. Okay, so let's get into the mechanics. Let's trace the journey. How does a bank or a fintech actually get their hands on XMD? The whole structure is meant to be streamlined. So users mint or redeem XMD on a one-to-one -one basis with USDC. With USDC specifically. Yes, and the source material really highlights that pairing. It gives you these uh, frictionless on-off ramps between a traditional bank account and the blockchain. You need that immediate liquidity to get a Treasury Department on board. Okay, so USDC is the main gateway. But here's the critical part, right? Once that USDC is deposited, what happens behind the scenes, inside the system? This is what's sometimes called the black box. Well, it's only a black box if you don't look at the smart contract code, which is designed to be auditable. Mm -hmm. When you mint XMD, the smart contract immediately and automatically allocates those reserves across the basket of stable coins it holds. It's a completely automated, you know, protocol enforced system. No human is in there making discretionary calls. But that raises a pretty critical question, and I think we need to challenge this a bit. Why have that intermediate step? If I'm a bank and I already trust USDC, why do I need this XMD wrapper on top? Isn't that just adding complexity? That's a fair question. Mm. But the sources argue that this complexity is actually necessary for managing systemic risk. Yeah. The contract's logic isn't static. Those preset rules are the key. What do you mean by that? The contract is programmed to manage risk. It can rebalance the basket based on things like um, an underlying stablecoin's latest audit results, its market cap, and this is the most important part, its current regulatory status in different countries. Ah, so the index is like a dynamic compliance filter. Exactly. If one of the stable coins in the basket suddenly faces, say, regulatory heat, the smart contract can automatically reduce its weighting or even remove it entirely. Without any manual intervention. It's a serious layer of automated protection, and that leads directly to the term the source material uses to describe it the meta stablecoin. This is where it gets really interesting because meta stablecoin isn't just a buzzword, it actually defines the entire risk profile of the asset. It does. Because it's diversified and actively managed by code, not just held in custody, it claims to be the safest and broadest exposure to USD-backed reserves on-chain. It's a stable coin of stable coins, conceptually. So every XMD is upheld by what the builders call these three non-negotiable pillars. Right. It has to be fully backed, first of all. Second, fully auditable, meaning all mechanics are transparent on-chain. And third, fully programmable for you know complex financial uses. That structural security is the foundation. You can't build a new financial backbone on something that's opaque or just relies on a promise. You can't. Auditable smart contracts address that directly. 
Okay, so let's pivot now from the how to the why, the urgency. There's this massive tectonic shift happening in global finance right now that seems to make a product like this necessary. Absolutely. We're seeing a total transformation of how money moves. Institutions are all pushing toward real-time settlement, instant payments, and they're all trying to comply with this new global standard, ISO 2022. And the old infrastructure is just too slow and expensive. It's slow, it's expensive, it's opaque. Mm -hmm. So they're desperate for a settlement asset that meets these new digital standards but still fits inside their very conservative risk frameworks. So it's like the technology, the programmable dollar is ready, but the compliance structure isn't quite there yet for them. That's the perfect storm. And that's where XMB tries to step in with its institutional checklist. The research we looked at details four crucial requirements that it claims to solve. And this is really the crux of the whole argument, right? It is. If it fails on any one of these four points, the project is a non-starter for any major financial player. Okay, so lay out the checklist for us. First, and this is the big one, it has to be regulator friendly. For a bank, that means it needs to fit into their existing KYC, AML, and capital requirement rules. The basket design really helps with that. Because it limits counterparty risk. Exactly. Second, it must be risk reduced through diversification. I mean, think about it. For a bank to bet all its digital settlement on one stable coin is like putting all its liquidity into one company's commercial paper. Yeah, that would never happen. It's unacceptable concentration risk. Right. The meta stablecoin structure spreads that risk out. Third, it has to be transparent via smart contracts. No opacity. The reserves, the allocation, the collateral quality, all of it needs to be auditable on chain. Okay. And the last one. And finally, it must be integrable. It has to work across DeFi, CeFi, and traditional enterprise payment systems. It can't be stuck in a silo on one chain. I really appreciate that framing. That checklist really shows the difference between a retail crypto product and an actual institutional utility. You miss one of those four and the whole thing just falls apart in the eyes of a bank. It does. And the source material ties this back to Metallicus, the company behind XMD. They've been building compliant infrastructure for years. So the claim is that XMD is engineered to be the settlement asset that finally unifies the ecosystem. So not just a new product, but the glue between the old and new financial worlds. That's the pitch. Okay, so we've covered the architecture, we've covered the institutional mandate. Let's talk ambition. If this actually works, what's the scope? The sources paint a pretty massive picture. The ambition is enormous. They're not shy about it. The goal is for XMD to become the universal on-chain dollar. Universal. So that implies it wants to be the default unit of value for everyone from a small credit union all the way up to a global remittance network. That's the vision. That's a bold vision. So for you, our listener, trying to assess the real world use for this, let's dive into a couple of specific use cases to see how this basket structure actually solves different problems. Yeah, let's move beyond just the list. Let's focus on two contrasting examples from the research. First, you have the heavily regulated world, banking pilots and private credit union subnets. Right. In that world, the main concern isn't really speed. It's all about regulatory classification and safety. How does XMD help there? It helps with two big things, compliance and sovereignty. By using XMD, a bank is using a pre-vetted basket of compliant assets. That reduces their own due diligence workload. Okay. And for a credit union, they can run a private subnet, a sort of controlled sandbox, and use XMD as the settlement layer inside it. This lets them test out instant settlement or tokenized deposits without taking on all the risk of a single issuer. That makes a lot of sense. It's an easy on-ramp to tokenization while keeping systemic risk low. Now let's jump to the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Liquidity pools and XPR network DeFi. That's pure programmable finance. Right. And in the DeFi context, XMD's job is to provide stability and trust. DeFi might love high yield, but a big institutional treasury is focused on one thing, capital preservation. They can't afford to lose money. Not a penny. So if they're going to provide liquidity to a pool, they need the underlying collateral to be the absolute highest quality. XMD is positioned to be that premium, diversified collateral that's less likely to depeg or get hit by a regulatory shock from one issuer. So it's the safe, low-risk anchor for more sophisticated on-chain treasury management. Exactly. So XMD is really trying to connect traditional corporate finance treasuries just looking for safety and utility with pure DeFi, all through one asset that's just engineered for trust. That is the final promise. It's positioned as a dollar that can live across every related chain 
backed by the best collateral, and designed specifically to break down those trust barriers for conservative financial players. It's engineered to minimize the why not factor. Okay, so what's the big picture here? If we synthesize everything, the mechanics, the checklist, the ambition, I think the main takeaway for you, the listener, is that large-scale institutional adoption of digital assets. Mm. It doesn't really depend on raw speed or maximizing yield. No, not at all. It's fundamentally dependent on structure and control. The whole shift hinges on regulatory compliance and uh, robust automated diversification that's enforced by smart contracts. The market is past the point where a single centralized issuer is enough for a large institution that has to manage systemic risk. So the basket approach isn't just a feature, it's a structural necessity for them. It's a risk mitigation strategy, first and foremost. Which raises a really important final question, and this is the one we want to leave you with from the research we've examined today. If a diversified basket approach like XMD is now what's needed to satisfy these high institutional demands for compliance and risk reduction, yeah. how much pressure does that put on the single issuer stablecoins in the near future? It's a huge question. I mean, if the biggest, most conservative financial players start insisting on this level of diversification for risk management, does that fundamentally change the entire stablecoin landscape? Does the meta stablecoin become the new default standard? Is that what all issuers are going to be measured against from now on? Where risk is spread out and compliance is dynamically monitored by code? It's a compelling future to consider as we watch the space mature. Thank you for joining us for this deep dive into the Metal Dollar Stablecoin Index. We'll see you next time.